fans and welcome to the tech review and today we're going to be taking a review on the MacBook Pro 13 inch made in 2010. Um, we're also going to be looking at how is it obsolete and how is it not obsolete. So to begin with, there's the MacBook Pro, small 13 inch. On the left hand side you got your mag safe, gigabit ethernet, firewire 800, display port, two USB 2.0, one SD card slot, mic, um, microphone slot and headphone slot, and a battery indicator. On the right hand side you get a Kensington lock and a super drive next to it, your DVD, CD drive, etc. Now, the one good thing about having a non-Retina MacBook Pro is that you can upgrade the hard drive, RAM, and add a second hard drive, which means, say, if you're, you have a 500 gig hard drive from Apple, and you decide to put one terabyte, you can take it out, put one terabyte, and take out your CD drive and buy an adapter kit and put your 500 gig as an external drive. Or you can put a one terabyte as a replacement as your 500 gig, like I said, and you can put an SSD as your secondary drive instead of having a CD drive, and your maximum RAM upgrade is 16 gigabytes. Now to let you know, on the Retina Pro, you don't, you do not have the ability to do this on your own because the RAM is soldered to the logic board. The battery is also glued to the chassis of the board, and the. Uh, TCI hard drive, you can take that out and put a new one in, but they always change the connectors, so it's going to be really hard to change it until the company makes the right one. And one more thing about the non-Retina Pro, you can take out the battery and put in, your, put in a new battery, which is good. Um, the ports that you get on the Retina MacBook Pro, in comparison to the non-Retina, you only get a MagSafe, two USB 3.0, HDMI, and two Thunderbolt display connectors, and you do not get an SD card slot. You get a headphone jack, but you do not get a battery indicator, which a lot of people like. The reason why they put two Thunderbolt display ports on there is that you can connect up two displays, or you can buy the Thunderbolt to Gigabit Ethernet adapter for like 20 bucks, and a FireWire 800 to Thunderbolt adapter for 20 bucks. That's if you use FireWire 800. So you got to add on the price of the adapters to the cost of the computer, and if you want to upgrade the RAM, because the computer comes with four gigs. And since it's a Retina version, you have to upgrade the RAM so you can have 8 gigs or 16 gigs down the future. So you got to add the price of the computer. Now with the regular MacBook Pro, not Retina, for the price, you get everything in it. You can get an SD card slot. It doesn't matter if you get an HDMI. Even though you don't use the CD drive a lot, take that out, put an SSD in there, SSD, or put another HDD in there, another hard disk drive. And if you don't use FireWire 800, there might be adapters that you can get for FireWire 800 to turn to another USB output. There might be adapters for that. Gigabit Ethernet, you never know when you're going to need to plug into the network to get stronger internet connection, and so forth and so on. Now, another reason why the MacBook Pro 13-inch from 2010 is obsolete is that you might say it's obsolete because it was made four years ago and today it's 2014. So that's four years ago. And the CPU and it's an Intel Core C Duo 2.4 gig with 6 gigs of RAM. I upgraded it from 2 to 6. The RAM is, the maximum speed is 10, 67 megahertz. It has an NVIDIA GeForce 320 and 256 megabytes of RAM on the graphics board, which the 6 gigs is shared to the graphics. Now, with Mavericks, 
when Mavericks came out last fall, or when it was released in the summer and then it came out in the fall, they opened it up and they started supporting IMAX from 2007, early 2007, late 2007, MacBook Pros, MacBook Airs, and those are older systems, and they run the second generation of the Intel chips that Apple started using back in 2006. So even though those are obsolete, but the software update form doesn't really make them obsolete. It's just that the hardware is older. But if Apple's doing um, software that can still work on them, that's great. So if you have a 2007 iMac, MacBook Pro, MacBook Air, even a Mac Pro, they can all still run the latest Mavericks. And OS 10.10 Yosemite that just came out will be able to run on that. If it doesn't run on that, then they might push it up to 2008 or 2009, but I'll let you know when I do a full Yosemite video when I get the beta for it. Now, with the MacBook Pro, not right now. Even though it's an older model, I can still get the internet done, every application works on there, every new application from the internet, like I was saying, and from Apple and other companies that are new still work on there, every piece of software that I buy from a store that says Apple, which there's technically not a lot, still works on there. Um, nothing is, all the software from Apple gets updated, everything from Apple gets updated. Everything works, and to give you a little fact, all these uh, YouTube videos I've been making were edited on this MacBook Pro. So, I mean, it can really get the job done with editing and all that. And you can do your word processing, word typing, Excel, that sort of stuff. Um, FaceTime camera, it has a 720p HD camera. Uh, it's it's not 1080p like on the new ones, uh, but hey, you don't really need that good of a camera on the laptop if you're going to be making FaceTime calls on it. And I don't think anyone's going to be making FaceTime calls on it anyway, because since you have an iPhone 4 or 4S, or if you've got a 5 or 5S, you don't even need to use your MacBook Pro's camera that much, so it doesn't really matter. The speakers on there are great. They're underneath the keyboard. The keyboard's backlit. It has a nice glass trackpad, like all of them do. On the front right-hand corner has the light indicator, which I don't know if it's still on the retina, but I'm going to say it, it's still on the retina. One thing they took, in, they took off from the retina was the IR sensor right next to it. The IR sensor, I haven't really tested it, but the IR sensor... You can use with an application called Front Row. Apple has taken that off since OS 10.7 Lion. So I don't know if the IR sensor can work with other software. You can use the Apple remote with it, but I have to do another video. I'll do another video to show you guys that it will work with what the IR sensor will work with. And terms of other software and will the Apple remote still work with it. That's one thing you do not get on the right now. MacBook Pro. Another thing that people don't like on the right now MacBook Pro that the MacBook Pro has, the regular MacBook Pro has, is the battery indicator. This thing is very awesome. Even though a lot of you guys don't may not want it, everybody wants it. Because I don't have to charge, I don't have to turn on my laptop to see if it's dying or not. I just click the button, and if it's like three bars down or one bar, then I know to charge it. Or if it's two bars, then I would plug it in, you know. But on the retina, since they've shrunken down the bezel that's small, you can't, there's no way for them to put it on there. Put a battery indicator. But they could have put a battery indicator, but they decided that's too old school. And that's why a lot of people are going back to the non-retina MacBook Pros. So, in this case, my mid-2010 MacBook Pro is old because of the hardware. 
but the software makes it go faster. And another thing I have to say is, when I upgraded the RAM from 2 gigs to 6 gigs, it improved it a lot. It made it from going slow to fast. And I'm going to be doing a video on upgrading it to 8 gigs. I'm going to try to see if I get some, some RAM that is faster than 1067. Because if I get a faster chip of RAM, then it'll go even faster. And I'm going to probably put an SSD in there and take out my CD drive. And one more thing about the CD drive part on the Retina, you have to buy a $79 CD drive. So add up all those accessories you need with the Retina. For that same price, cheaper, you can even just buy a old, older MacBook Pro with 2012 spec in it. Spec hardware, which is still good, i7 and all that good stuff. And you can still upgrade. So, the MacBook Pro, it's, the non-retina one is very good, because, you know, say if I don't need a CD drive, pop that out, I'm going to put an SSD in there, actually. I'm probably going to buy, like, a 500 gig SSD and put it on there and see if I can put the operating system onto the SSD and have the applications onto the hard drive. And I'll be making a video on that. And I'll be making a video on FireWire 800 to USB. That's if they do sell an adapter like that. I'm not guaranteed on that. And I'm going to do a video on the IR Blaster to see if it still works with the Apple TV remote and see what software that I can use on that operating system. And see if I can, if I can control the TV with it. Then that's another reason why to also get another, to get a MacBook Pro not right now because they have uh, the IR sensor and if you can control the TV with your laptop and see if your remote doesn't really work and you have the software and your laptop right there you just dial in the number and that's it changes the station so a lot of you guys are going to say it is obsolete I'm not going to argue too much about it and I'm letting you guys know it is obsolete due to hardware but it's not due to software and there's more advantages to it than you have on the Retina model. So if anyone is watching this video and they would like to know, well, should I buy the Retina one from Apple or buy a MacBook Pro non-Retina, the, the last 13-inch model we got that has 2012 hardware specs on them, I would say buy the MacBook Pro 13-inch non-Retina with um, the older hardware specs of 2012, and I would advise you to only upgrade the CPU from a Core i5 to a dual core 2.9 core i7 you would love it just upgrading that cpu for 150 dollars and when you get it and say if you want to go to eight gigs because you know you're really going to do a lot with it just go on crucial.com check out um maxsales.com owc is also maxsales.com i will leave those two links in the description and another thing I would suggest, check out your local computer store vendor. Like if you see a store on the side of the road that says computer repair and they do Apple computers, see if you can get how much would it cost to get RAM in it. Because you can get cheap RAM from them and they'll install it and you can test it right there. That's what I did when I upgraded this the 6 gigs of RAM. I took it to the store around the corner, paid about 30 bucks. He installed it. He tested it, I tested it, and it worked, and I get two months of warranty on it. So, those are your options with upgrading RAM. If you want to upgrade the hard drive, I would say go to Newegg.com, Tiger Direct, Best Buy, and look around for prices. Look for a 2.5-inch SSD. Go with 6 gigabytes per second. And... Say if you have a 500 gig and you want a terabyte, buy the terabyte. The terabytes are 70, 80 bucks now. Plus shipping and tax, depending on where you live. You know, if they got tax and shipping cost. And you can install it yourself. There's a lot of YouTube videos online how to install hard drives into your computer without losing information 
one place I would say to go buy your hard drive from is OWC, which I'll, like, again, I said I'll leave a link in the description. That's where you can buy your hard drive and buy a um, hard drive case with it so you can plug it into the USB and transfer your information over. And I will leave more details in the description about that and more links in the description. Thank you for watching the tech review. Please like, subscribe, leave me a comment, and have a nice day. I hope this answers your questions if a Retina MacBook Pro is obsolete or not. Not a, not a Retina MacBook Pro. A non-Retina is obsolete or not versus buying a Retina. Thank you and have a good day.